If you're looking to pair Tone Stack Pro with Loopy Pro for some killer guitar tones, but you want greater control and flexibility over the different presets inside of Tone Stack, then this lesson should have you covered. We're going to be looking at how to send MIDI messages and create some cool widgets so that you can really get control of your pedal board inside of Tone Stack. So let's get into it. So this is the template that I have created inside of Loopy Pro to demonstrate how you can control Tone Stack Pro using MIDI messages. Now if you do download this template, there is a little tour with information that talks you through the different steps you need in order to get this working and a few helpful tips and demonstrations of different widgets that I've set up. So go and check the link down in the description and you can download it and have a little play around. So let's take a quick look at how we can control Tone Stack Pro inside of Loopy Pro. So to start with, you're gonna to need to create an input channel for your guitar. To do that, you need to head on down to the mixer window, press the plus icon in the bottom right hand corner, and you're gonna need a hardware input. Now this is gonna depend on the input in which you have plugged your guitar in, but I'm going for input three here, because this is where I've got my guitar. Now once you've created that channel, the next step is to make sure you add an instance of Tone Stack Pro. And I like to add it here in the effects pre-fader section. If you press the plus icon, you'll see a list of the different plugins that you've got. The one you want, if you go down to Tone Stack, you've got two options, Tone Stack Pro and Tone Stack Pro MIDI. Now because we're gonna be sending MIDI messages, that's how we're gonna to control Tone Stack Pro. You need to select Tone Stack Pro MIDI. Okay, so you've got your channel, you've got Tone Stack Pro added to that channel. You're now ready to start thinking about how you're gonna control different features inside of Tone Stack Pro. To try and demonstrate what's possible, let me open up the Tone Stack Pro interface. Here you can see Tone Stack Pro. On this preset, we've got all the different devices and then you can see all of these different presets here. Now in order to get Loopy Pro to talk to Tone Stack, you need to go into the settings, go down to where it says MIDI and then one of the settings you need to make sure you've got is load CC map from patch. And what this means is that if we set up buttons inside Loopy Pro that trigger different functions inside of Tone Stack using MIDI messages, then we can save all of that hard work into the patch. So the next time we load up that patch, everything works as we would expect it to. Now the first section inside my template to control Tone Stack Pro is this app control section down in the bottom left hand corner. And I've set up four different button widgets to simply change preset, we can change preset forward, backwards. We can also change the banks up and down. Let me show you how that works first of all. So to start with, we've got this little hot blues preset. If I press the next preset, it goes to calm blues. And we can cycle through the different presets within that bank. You can also change banks with the buttons down the bottom here. We can go to the next bank or the previous bank. Let's take a quick look at one of those buttons to see how I have configured it so that Loopy Pro talks to Tone Stack Pro. Let's click the pencil icon and we'll click on the next preset button. And you can see here on press, I am sending a MIDI message via CC 
to Tone Stack Pro, and I've just chosen a random CC value that wasn't already occupied. I've chosen CC89 for this instance, and you can see the target here is set to Tone Stack Pro MIDI. So that's the MIDI being sent from the widget inside Loopy Pro to Tone Stack Pro, but we need to set up Tone Stack Pro to listen for that MIDI event. So let's open up Tone Stack. If we head over to Settings, go down to MIDI, and then we need to click on this MIDI Learn App Controls. And in here, you've got some common operations that you may want to control. So you can see things like the tuner on and off, the next bank, the previous bank, etc, etc. And you can see here on Bank Previous, I've set that as CC86, Bank Next 87, 88, 89. So you can click on any one of those, you can type in the number that you want, and you can click Set. So now these buttons operate as you would expect. You can go to the next preset, previous preset, the next bank, or the previous bank. The next section inside the template is showcasing how you can select different banks. So here in the bank selection, we've got Pro 1, Pro 2, Classics 1, and Classics 2. Now this corresponds to the banks that came as standard inside Tone Stack Pro when I got it. It may look a little different for you, so adjust the names and adjust the configuration to suit you. If we take a look inside of Tone Stack Pro in the preset section, where you can see all of your presets, how they're saved, and how they are set up inside the banks, you'll see that currently we are on Pro 1, and if I press Pro 2, it goes across to the next bank along. Classics 1 and Classics 2. Now to see how we've configured the buttons inside Loopy Pro, again, I've gone down to the pencil icon into the edit page. This time I chose to use radio buttons. I clicked this little radio grid here. Let's click on one of those radio buttons to see what MIDI messages I am sending. So you can see here, I've created four different buttons, Pro 1, Pro 2, Classics 1, and Classics 2. Now they all do similar things, but they select slightly different values because we want different banks. So let's just look at Pro 1 for a minute. I've sent two MIDI messages. The first one is to send CC0. Now this selects the bank inside of Tone Stack, but you need to give it both CC0 and then the value that you wish to have. So in this case, CC0 and then the value is value 2. If we go back and have a look at Tone Stack Pro, the Pro 1 bank in brackets on the left here, you can see is number 2. So that's why I've chosen the value 2 within the CC message. Now, as well as sending CC0, I'm also sending a PC message of 0 so that it selects the first preset in that bank. I've then copied those steps for all four buttons, but just changed the values to match the banks that we need. Another example of preset selection, and this time we're using a stepped dial to select different presets for the Pro 1 bank. You'll see here, if I move the step dial, it cycles through the different press. So we've got stereo surfing here, psycho billy, etc., etc. Again, inside Tone Stack Pro, if I move that dial, it corresponds to the different presets. And to set this one up, again, we're sending MIDI messages. I'll quickly show you where to find that. If I click on Select, we want to go down right at the bottom here, Send MIDI Message, and then the program changes are under PC, and you simply just choose the value that you want, or in other words, you choose the preset from that bank that you want. If you want the first preset, it starts at zero, and then it goes on from there. Now that just covers some of the basic operations that you probably need, mainly selecting presets, selecting banks, and being able to switch between them on the fly inside of Loopy Pro. Of course, depending on the banks that you've got set up and the presets that you've got set up, you'll want to customize this. But I'm hoping this just gives you the information you need to start setting up your templates. Now some other really cool things you can do with Loopy Pro and Tone Stack is the ability to set up Dials to control individual things on individual stomp boxes. You can turn stomp boxes on and off. You could create multiple pages inside Loopy Pro with different stomp boxes on your favorite presets so you can get a bit more hands on. I'm just going to demonstrate two stomp boxes from the Hot Blues preset that I've got set up here. So again, if you download this uh, template, you can have a play around with all these settings. You can go in and see the MIDI messages I've used, try and understand the configuration that I've gone for, and then again, apply it to your own templates. So let's click the Load Hot Blues 
preset here. So let's just check. Nice stock little preset there. So if I want to be able to turn the boost on for hot blues, I can do so with this button that I've got right here. So without the boost, with the boost, I can choose how throaty that boost gets. And all within Loopy Pro here, pretty cool. I've also done this for a reverb stomp inside of Tone Stack. Let's turn the reverb on. We can mess with the mix. Choose how roomy you want it. Almost kind of like a shimmer. And just to show you how that's reacting inside of Tone Stack, I've opened the window on the left hand side here. You can see if I turn the reverb on. It toggles on, it toggles off. And if I turn any one of these dials, you can see it's moving the corresponding dial for that reverb, which is pretty cool. Now to set this up inside of ToneStack Pro, you need to map the controls using MIDI Learn inside of ToneStack itself. So let me show you where to find that. If you go to settings, Again, down in the MIDI section, but this time we want to click on the MIDI Learn units. And once we toggle that, you'll see that we've got all of these different dials. We can click on any one of them. So let's just say, for example, if I click Time and then I move the pre-fader here, I've got set up inside of Loopy, that has sent CC18 to that dial. Now, once I'm finished, I can go into Settings. I need to turn off the MIDI Learn units. And now when I move that dial, you'll see it will move the time. Now you will want your mapped MIDI buttons to be saved with the patch. So make sure that when you're finished, you come over to the preset menu here and you need to click this what looks like a little pencil with a back arrow symbol. When you press that, it should say settings saved. Now the next time you load your preset, let's click load hot blues here. All of your settings should stay as they were. So that's just some of the basics when it comes to MIDI inside of Loopy Pro and how to control ToneStack Pro. You can set up a whole number of widgets in different ways, different pages. Of course, you can then map any of these buttons or widgets to hardware controllers or foot switches if you've got a MIDI foot switch, but I've just done it on screen so that I can show you how it works. But please do click on the link down in the description below. You can download this template for free, try it out for yourself, and then have a look at some of the settings and get a good understanding of how you may send MIDI in and out of ToneStack Pro. But that's it from me today, guys. Hopefully that helps some of you out there looking to pair up ToneStack with Loopy Pro. I'll see you in the next video. Take it steady. Cheers.